So today I want to make a video on 2pi and in particular I want to talk about the units of 2pi. And so interestingly I started making this uh, slideshow, this slide presentation on June 28th which is tau day 6.28 and so 2pi is equal to 6.28 plus a bunch of digits because it's an irrational number. And so today I want to finish this video and uh, we are going to be talking about 2pi as it relates to modified unit analysis um, and indirectly the Ohm particle model which I depict uh, using the yin yang symbol. So one of the reasons I'm making this now is I'm reviewing uh, another paper of John Mackin called A Single Field Model of the Universe. And uh, it is a really great paper. I'm really enjoying reading it and reviewing it. Uh, but there's one um, point of contention between John and I, and it has to do with modified unit analysis. And so in this abstract, he says, you know, the wave acquires particle-like properties because it has quantized angular momentum. And so we will be talking about angular momentum, the units of angular momentum, and what this means, what it means to have quantized angular momentum. And then uh, after I'm done this video, I'm actually going to do a proper rev review of this paper. So this conversation begins with a mathematical statement, let the units of 2 pi be radians per cycle. Okay, so when we let the units of 2 pi be radians per cycle, something interesting happens. And so I want to let the units of 2 pi be radians per cycle. And so 2 pi is equal to 6.28 plus a bunch of digits because it's an irrational number. And I want the units of 2 pi to be explicitly written in the unit section of an equation as radians per cycle or uh, like this because this is, uh, looks much nicer. And so uh, in modified unit analysis, I write rad per cycle in the triangle symbol, uh, use the triangle symbol for uh, cycle. And so uh, I want to show you what happens when we let the units of 2 pi be radians per cycle. So first of all, I want to review what it means to be a radian. So one radian is equal to the angle such that the arc length of a circle of the outer uh, perimeter of the circle, circumference of the circle, is equal to the radius of the circle. So the radian is an arbitrary angle uh, which happens to where the arc length of the circle happens to equal the radius of the circle. And so this is uh, the meaning behind the radian. The radian is an angle and the arc length is a distance. You will also notice that the angle when converted to degrees is 57.296 uh, degrees. So there are 57.296 degrees uh, in one radian. And so the 6.28, uh, 6.28 means that there are 6.28 of these in one, cir one circle, in one cycle. And so uh, this value here is, when you convert to degrees, of course, is, uh, is not a whole number. So there is not a whole number of uh, radians in one circle. There are 6.28 radians in one uh, circle, in one cycle. So the next thing I want to do is a similar treatment. Uh, instead of using radians, I want to switch to degrees. And so uh, here I say let the units of the value 360 be degrees per cycle. And so we know for sure that there are 360 degrees per cycle, per circle, and so uh, we could just as easily say let the units of 360 be degrees per cycle. If we're in the domain of degrees, then um, the units in the unit section should uh, contain degrees per cycle. So we should be writing 360, and in the units we write degrees uh, per cycle. 
Similarly, if we're in the gradients, if we're using the gradient system of measuring angles instead of radians or instead of degrees, we would say um, that there are 400 gradients per cycle and um, the uh, circle, the unit circle would be divided into 400 gradients. And so uh, if we saw the, um, the value 400 in an equation, that would mean that uh, we're in the domain of the gradient and we would have to rate gradients per cycle in the unit section of the equation. So the point I'm trying to make here is that um, radians, which is uh, the value of 2 pi is 6.28, so there are 6.28 radians in one cycle. Um, alternatively, there are 360 degrees in one cycle, and there are 400 gradients in one cycle. And so uh, radians, the cho choosing radians as our unit of measuring angles is, um, is arbitrary. It's convenient but it's also arbitrary because uh, 360 degrees is also convenient because that's what I was taught was there are 360 degrees and when I pull out my protractor, it is usually in degrees and I'm measuring degrees when I'm measuring angles using my protractor. But mainstream physicists like to do things in radians. They chose radians, and this is the standard that they chose. Um, the only difference I'm doing here is I am actually writing uh, the radian term into the unit section and the cycle term in the um, unit section. And so 2 pi, which is equal, equal to 6.28, there are 6.28 radians per cycle. These are the units of 2 pi, whether you write them or not, these are the units of 2 pi, and the units of 2 pi are radians per cycle. But in the mainstream language, the um, units of 2 pi are unitless. So when we let the units of 2 pi be unitless, then uh, we must write Planck's energy equation like this. And so what I did was I pulled out the 2 pi from the um, in the equation, I exposed the 2 pi in the equation, and I wrote um, energy is equal to reduced Planck's constant times 2 pi times the frequency. And so in the mainstream language, the units of frequency is uh, per second, or 1 over s as they normally write it, or sometimes they will write it s to the minus 1. Regardless, um, it is uh, written like this. And um, the units of reduced Planck's constant is uh, joule times second. And I just put the one here just because I can. So if you can do this, then you can do this. And plus, this makes the uh, unit section look more balanced. And so when you let the units of 2 pi be unitless, OK, so now 2 pi doesn't have any units. And so uh, the ones cancel, the s's cancel, and you, you end up with the units of joules as, um, as expected. So although this may look prettier mathematically, it is my opinion that this is uh, the wrong thing to do. It is my opinion and has always been my opinion that putting numerical values in the unit section of an equation is a mistake. Okay, so. Uh, what they're doing is they're putting the numerical value of 1 into the unit section of the equation and then using it as a unit or using it as the value of 1 as if it was in the body of equation. Now, if I took 1 and put it in the body of equation and said 1 times uh, this function, this equation, um, that wouldn't change anything. But putting the numerical value of 1 into the unit section, I think is, I believe is a mistake because it is, uh, it is going to cause some confusion in terms of interpretation of the unit section. But when we mathematically let the units of 2 pi be radians per cycle, then we have to write radians per cycle in the unit section of the equation. And now you can see that the unit section is no longer balanced. Okay, the ones cancel, the s's cancel, but we still have this, uh, this to deal with. And so when you let the units of 2 pi be radians per cycle, we have no choice but to do this. Okay, 
So here we have, so the radian goes here and the cycle goes here. And now we have a beautifully balanced um, unit section of the equation. And, um, and also we have all the information in the unit section, including um, a unit for the angle, okay, and a unit for the one complete cycle. So I think it's important to put these terms back into the unit section because it affects the interpretation of the equations. So now what I want to do is I want to find the correct location for this 2 pi parameter. So sometimes this 2 pi gets grouped with h, with h bar, uh, and this equates to h, or sometimes it gets grouped with the frequency term and we end up with, um, with the angular frequency. And so I'm going to start by grouping it with the h bar. And of course, this ends up being h. Okay, so h times 2 pi, or h bar times 2 pi is h, is Planck's constant. So now we have the equation e equals Planck's constant times frequency. Okay. And so um, then what we want to do is, so here is the unit section where we have this grouped uh, the same as this. And so the radians cancel, the, um, the cycles also cancel. And so the units of Planck's constant, non-reduced Planck's constant, is um, joules times second per cycle. And the units of frequency are cycles per second. So when we let the units of 2 pi be radians per cycle, we have no choice but to do this. We have no choice but to write the units like this. And so this is what I, I refer to as modified unit analysis. I'm modifying unit analysis to, can, to um, explicitly write the cycle term and the radian term or the angle term. If we're in degrees, we write degrees. If we're in gradients, we write gradients. And if we're in radians, we write radians. So now I'm going to group the 2 pi with the frequency term. And when you do that, you end up with angular frequency. And so when you reduce the, um, the units in this uh, unit equation, we end up with this. And so the units of reduced Planck's constant is joules times second per radian. And the uh, units of omega, the units of angular frequency, are radians per second. And radian is a measure of an angle. And that's why this is referred to as angular frequency. But this angle, this angle is corresponds to an arc length that just happens to be equal to the radius of the circle. But this is an arbitrary choice for an angle. We could have, if I'm in the domain of, the deg of degrees, then this number gets replaced by 360. And these two um, positions here in the unit section get replaced with degree. So next, we're going to focus on this guy here, um, reduced Planck's constant, which uh, when we let the units of 2 pi be radians per cycle, the units of h bar are joule times second per radian. OK, and so um, it is often said that the units of uh, reduced Planck's constant, or that Planck's constant has the units of angular momentum. And so we're going to have a closer look at that. But before we do that, I want to have a closer look at the units of angular momentum that is used in the standard language. And so in the standard language, the unit language, the units of angular momentum are kilogram meters squared per second. OK, so these are the units of angular momentum. And um, so th this has caused me a great amount of um, thought, a great amount of grief because I don't really understand these units. I don't understand how these can be the units of angular momentum when there's no unit that's associated with angle. There is no angle unit in the unit section. So looking at these units as specified here, it's very difficult for me to see that um, these are the units of angular momentum. Now I can split out momentum 
uh, like I do here. So I can uh, split up these, uh, these meter terms and I can group uh, these like this. And so these are the units of momentum. And so I can see momentum in these units, but what I don't see is an angular term. And this is what modified unit analysis um, hopes to uh, fix. So the units of reduced Planck's constant in the standard language is joule times second. In modified unit analysis, it's joules times second per radian. And it is also in the standard uh, language, it is, uh, these are also the units of angular momentum. So there are many ways of writing the, the units of angular momentum and when you write them. And so we're going to, we're going to expand on this here to show how modified unit analysis finds angular momentum. So when we let the units of two pi be radians per cycle, the units of reduced Planck's constant is joule times second per radian. And so uh, this maps out as follows. So H bar, reduced Planck's constant, is Planck's constant, non-reduced Planck's constant, divided by 6.28 or divided by pi. Okay, the units for, for uh, non-reduced Planck's constant is joule times second per cycle. In, uh, when we let the when we let the units of two pi be radians, okay, so then we have no choice for the units of Planck's constant to be joules times second per cycle, and so um, and so then the units of two pi are radians per cycle. So because this is uh, in the denominator, this needs to be reversed. So the units of 6.28 or two pi are radians per cycle, there are 6.28 radians uh, in each cycle, okay? And when uh, you reduce this, so the uh, cycle cancels and you end up with the units for reduced Planck's constant being joule times second per radian. So this is another way of uh, deriving the radians, uh, the units of reduced Planck's constant using modified unit analysis. So next, I'm going to write Planck's energy equation uh, in a more blunt form. And so energy equals reduced Planck's constant times 6.28 times 2 pi times uh, the frequency. And this is frequency in cycles per second. If I then switch to degrees, so if I calibrate myself to the degrees instead of the radians when I'm calibrated to the degree, okay, we would might write something like this. Okay, so now instead of um, an H bar, we could have something like an H dot. So H dot is equal to Planck's constant divided by 360. So instead of dividing by two pi, instead of dividing by the constant 6.28, we divide by the constant 360 because there are 360 um, degrees per cycle. Okay, so um, we've got this new H dot is equal to a different constant H, Planck's constant over 360. And so Planck's constant has un units joules times second per cycle, uh, 360. There are 360 degrees per cycle. Okay, and so the cycles cancel and you end up with H dot has units of joules times second per degree. So these are the units of angular momentum when we're calibrated to the degree. Okay, when, when we're calibrated to the degree, these are the units of angular momentum. When we're calibrated to the radian, when we're using radians, this is the angular momentum ca uh, calibrated to the radian. And so that's why we use H bar. So when we're calibrated to the degree, Planck's energy equation becomes energy equals h dot so h dot is equal to h is equal to h divided by 360 so energy equals h dot times 360 times the frequency and this frequency is going to be in um, degrees per cycle okay frequency is going to be in degrees per cycle 
and uh, the units of Planck's constant is going to be joule times second per degree, okay? So this is uh, the energy equation we would write, write if we were calibrated to the degree. And of course, when we are calibrated to the radian, this is the equation we would write. Energy equals h bar, which is this constant here, times 2 pi times the frequency, and the frequency is going to be in radians per second. Okay, so now let's talk about angular momentum as it relates to reduced Planck's constant, because radians is what everyone's using, and so I want to find um, the units for angular momentum using uh, this formula here. And so we're going to start with that. We've got um, h bar with units joule times second per radian. Okay, and of course, this is when we let the units of 2, two pi be radians per cycle. So when we do that, we have to write the units for reduced Planck's constant like this. Okay, and the joule here, so um, this is not, so these are the units of angular momentum, but I don't see momentum in the units, so I want to see momentum in the units. And so I do, um, I, you know, the units of joule are kilogram meters per second. I pull the second per radian over here just so that we can split things up nicely. And then I'm going to further reduce this to show the units of, um, the units of momentum. Okay. Uh, times the units of meters per radian. Okay, so meters per radian is over here. I can now see the units of momentum. So this is called angular momentum. I want to see angle and I want to see momentum in my units. And so I can see momentum here and I can now see angle in the units of angular momentum. And this can only be done using modified unit analysis, i.e. when you let the units of 2 pi be radians per cycle. So these units over here, meter per radian, what does that correspond to? Well, meters per radian are the units of uh, lambda bar. Okay, lambda bar is the reduced wavelength. So these are the units of reduced wavelength. Okay, and so in uh, the own particle model, the wavelength of the model is corresponds to the circumference of the circle which uh, corresponds to the Compton wavelength of the particle. And so reduced wavelength, I guess that would be called, this is reduced wavelength or lambda bar, um, has units meters per radian. Now, what does that mean in terms of angular momentum? Well, this is the angular momentum of, let's say there's a particle, let's say there's a point on the outer edge of this spinning. Obviously, this is spinning. And the outer edge, as I talked about in other videos, um, the velocity, the tangential velocity of the system is the speed of light. And when, when you let that happen, the outer circumference is actually the Compton wavelength of the model. And so reduced wavelength is actually reduced, or sorry, uh, angular momentum in the domain of radian uh, is the momentum of a particle that travels a fraction of the cycle. So it is the momentum imparted by only part of the cycle, one radian worth of the cycle. And so uh, this is the momentum. So these are the units of angular momentum for a incomplete cycle, for one incomplete cycle. Okay, so this is what most of the physicists are doing. This is the domain they're working in. The, uh, they're calibrated to the radian. They're working in the domain of the radian. And so um, their interpretation of quantization, they are not quantized by the radian. They are quantifying by the radian, okay? So they are quantifying their physics by the radian. It's not quantization, it's quantification. And so I think that's an important way to distinguish what's going on here, okay? Quantization is something else. Quantization is, to me, quantization would be one cycle. So this system here is quantized by one cycle because when it makes one exact cycle, it comes back to where it was before. And so I believe nature is quantized by the cycle. And that makes sense. It makes logical sense that the universe would be quantized by the cycle. And if everyone said the universe is quantized by the cycle, no one would disagree. It would just be uh, kind of self-evident. 
So now we're going to do the same thing with h, with uh, non-reduced Planck's constant. So uh, when you let when you let the units of 2 pi be radians per cycle, you have no choice. The units of Planck's constant are joules times second per cycle. Okay, and so we're going to do the same treatment with this. So here are the units of uh, non-reduced Planck's constant. I'm going to split out the uh, the, ener the units for joule. Okay, and I'm going to group the uh, S term with the with the cycle term. And so you can see uh, this nice clean, uh, the, the units here expand out to the units here. And then I'm going to cancel the seconds here. So one, this is going to cancel with one of these. And now I'm going to write the units in terms of momentum and um, an angle, which happens to be 360 degrees or two pi radians uh, around the circle. So this uh, is the symbol for one complete cycle. And I think this needs to be here. So uh, these are the units in modified unit analysis. Meters per cycle are the units of wavelength. And they are also the units for the circumference of a circle when an object is spinning. So this is only valid when an object is spinning, when we have vortices, when we have things that are spinning then uh, this wavelength uh, is analogous to the, to the um, circumference of a circle. So the Compton wavelength of this particle here, which could be an electron, is the Compton wavelength of the electron. So in the standard language, both Planck's constant and reduced Planck's constant have the units of angular momentum. And so in the standard language, these uh, differences, so H and H bar have the units of angular momentum, but they are not distinguished in any way. So H has units J times S, and H bar has units J times S in the standard language. And so in modified unit analysis, when you let, when you let the units of 2 pi be radians per cycle, then, um, then these terms can get be included into the unit analysis and, and make more sense, okay? So this is what I'm trying to do. So for, I'm gonna do something kind of crazy for the sake of argument, okay? So now we're gonna take the H dot that I calculated before, and of course H dot is calculated using H over 360, and there are 360 degrees per cycle. And so these are the units of angular momentum when you're calibrated to the degree, when your calculator is in degree mode, these are the units of the H dot, which is the H bar of the domain of, um, of degrees. So when we're calibrated to the degree, and I think that's an important way of looking at it, because we can either, if we're using degrees, we're calibrated to degrees. And if we're using seconds, we're calibrated to the second. And so when we're calibrated to the degree, this is the, these are the units of angular momentum. So these all correspond to angular momentum. Okay, so H bar is angular momentum, H is angular momentum, and the one I made up, H dot, is also the angular momentum. So which one is nature doing? Okay, which one is nature doing? Because I want to get to the root of what nature is doing, and so I want to be calibrated to the system that nature is, is doing. And so the only thing that makes sense to me is to, um, to use cycle instead of radian. So to be to calibrate yourself to the cycle so that you can get the, the numerology, you can get the numbers uh, that correspond to um, what nature does. And so if you are always using the system that nature is using, then you're not going to get confused. You're not going to, if you're, because so, sometimes we switch, sometimes we use H, sometimes we use, we use H bar. Okay. And so I think it's important maybe to pick one and stick with it and see how far you get. And that's what I've been doing. I've been trying to stick with one, with the uh, circumference of the circle, with the complete wavelength, not the H bar, because in wave mechanics, well, let me find the H bar. In wave mechanics, H bar is a fraction of a wave. It is not the complete wave. And so, sorry, lambda bar, I said H bar, lambda bar, is the is a fraction of a wave such that the length of the wave is equal to um, the 
the um, wavelength divided by 2 pi. Okay, so it's a fraction. It is a fraction of the wave and not the full complete uh, cycle of the wave. Okay, so I think it's important to distinguish that or to realize that when you're using radians, you are calibrated to the radian and everything you're measuring is just a fraction, corresponds to the energy of, the mass of, the momentum of, angular momentum of, a fraction of a cycle. So here are the three angular momentum units from the three um, ways of measuring angle, the three angle coordinate systems. So when we're using degrees, this, these are the units of angular momentum in modified unit analysis, of course, in um, the domain of the radian, when we're calibrated to the radian, these are the units of angular momentum. And when we're calibrated to the cycle, these, um, this is the, these are the units of um, angular momentum. So calibrated to the degrees, calibrated to the radians, calibrated to the cycle. This is the one I like. I want to be calibrated to the cycle um, just so I can get a better understanding of how nature works. Okay, so I'm going to write these three energy equations um, uh, that I wrote before and seeing these together kind of gives us a little bit of insight into what's going on. And so here we've got energy is equal to H dot, which I made up, uh, which is Planck's constant divided by 360. Okay, E is equal to H dot times 360 times frequency. And this is going to frequency is going to be in cycles, um, cycles, sorry, degrees per second. Okay, degrees per second. And so this energy equation is uh, what we usually see. So E equals H bar times pi times frequency. And this frequency is in um, cycles or is in radians per second. Okay. So this is it in the domain. This equation is written in the domain of the radian. And this equation is written in the domain or calibrated to the degree. And so when you use this one, so energy is equal to Planck, non-reduced Planck's constant times one, so times frequency, and this frequency is in cycles per second. And so um, one here is, means that there's one cycle per cycle. So there's three, sorry, one, um, one cycle per cycle. So one is one cycle. And so this is 360 degrees per cycle this is 2.68 radians per cycle, and this is one cycle per cycle, which is why you don't have to write it. Okay, you don't have to write that because it's cycle per cycle and they cancel. And so uh, this equation here is what's often used. And the other point I want to make is that um, Planck's constant, non-reduced Planck's constant, is what we measure in the experiments. Okay, so in the experiments, it's always H. It's never H bar, and it's never H dot. It's always H. And so I want to work with the equations that nature makes, with the equations that come out of the experiments. To, uh, dividing H by 2 pi is as arbitrary as dividing H by 360 or by 400 if you're using the gradients. Okay, I think that um, this is the more natural equation to be using if you want to understand light, and that if you're putting a great importance on radians here, a radian being only a fraction of a cycle, then I think you're going to run into some trouble in terms of interpretation. And so this is what I like. This is what I like. I want to use H as often as I can in the equations. I'm not going to use H bar. These are the units of H. These are the units of non-reduced Planck's constant, okay, which um, can be interpreted as the energy of, okay, the energy of one uh, wave period. So the units here, uh, seconds per cycle, those are the units of the wave period, okay, and of course meters per cycle, meters per circumference, meters per Compton wavelength, okay. These are the units of um, wavelength. Okay, these are the units units of um, of one complete wave. One the meters. This is the distance all the way around the circle, or a distance a particle on this uh, edge here that happens to be spinning. This is how far it goes to go once around. Okay, 
So I think this is just easier to understand. It's easier to um, visualize because I can visualize one cycle. I have a hard time without this map visualizing one rad radian, okay? It's sort of that amount of distance, but I know exactly one cycle is when this spins around and comes back exactly where it was before. And so in terms of understanding nature, I think it's really important that we um, do it this way to simplify the concepts in our minds rather than use radians just because it might be mathematically convenient if you happen to be calibrated to the radian. Okay, I'm going to calibrate to the cycle and then I'm going to see how far that takes me. I think it's going to take me all, all the way to the end of the road and I should be able to do everything using modified unit analysis and I think my interpretations of the equations are going to be better than the standard way because the standard way is a little confusing in my opinion and I'm just trying to clear things up. So I just want to show you one more thing. Okay, this is a figure from John Mackin's paper. And um, so this uh, here is uh, represents, this is a, the, his model of the electron. Okay, and his electron has a, a core that is a spinning, is a, a wave that's propagating in place. It's a wave that's propagating in a circle um, and it's got a hill and it's got a valley. So you can imagine, almost imagine this as kind of a sine wave. And if you spin the sine wave, you're gonna see the kind of wave propagation that he's trying to show here. And so then he's got this other diagram here, which is supposedly in the time domain. I don't quite understand that picture yet. I'll have to study it more, but I'm going to add a picture to this sequence. Okay, so this is, this is my schematic I believe my schematic of what he's showing here. Okay, so and actually what he's trying to explain in his in his theory. And so um, basically, uh, I'm interpreting this as um, as a hill. Okay, it goes from, you know, dark is low and light is high. So this is a hill, and this is a valley. So this is a hill and this is a valley. So this is schematically corresponds to this model here, although this model here doesn't really depict rotation. So he had to create this other diagram that kind of depicts that these are rotating. But in my model, the rotation is built into the schematic. You can see that this is um, rotating, that the hill and the valley are rotating about a common central point. And in the own particle model, so this is my own particle model, the circumference of this circle, i.e., the distance that a, let's say, a particle, an ether particle on the outer edge here, the distance it travels is going to be the Compton wavelength of the particle. So if this is an electron, this distance is going to be the, um, this, the wavelength, the Compton wavelength of the particle. And so this is where my theory and John's theory meet. Okay, we are differing in uh, this question here, to pi or not to pi, or, you know, to let, okay, to let the units, let's go back to the beginning slide here, where I want to let the units of 2 pi be radians per cycle. In other words, I want to write radians per cycle in the unit section, and then I want to make sure that the, the units are balanced when we put all the other units in place. And so this is, this is uh, where um, John and I differ in our language, and that's all. We're only differing in the language. Everything that he's writing in his paper, and I am going to do a proper review of it, is is uh, is brilliant. And so I, I look forward to reading it. It's he, He's a very good writer. He writes very well. And uh, so I just wanted to point out, and most of this video is for, for John Mackin, because I want him to really understand where I'm coming from, and uh, just so we can have a discussion about it. And so this is my model. This is a schematic of, I believe, what John Mackin is trying to say in this paper. So I'm going to leave it at that. And uh, for sure, I will be back.